Hi. 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 Good, great. Um, so I'm Tony. Hi, I'm the president of NUS. And I spent I spent I spent quite a lot of time thinking about what I should say tonight. Um, and it's quite difficult, um, actually. It's quite a difficult thing to talk about, I think, because it's quite a difficult thing to come out and march on a Reclaim the Night march. And it's quite a difficult thing to stand up as a woman and say this isn't good enough. And it's quite a difficult thing to stand on a stage in front of a lot of people and talk about your experience as a woman. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, so bear with me. Um, so I, um, I'm the president of NUS. And um, uh, some of you know, probably most of you don't. I'm, I'm the first president of NUS to come from a college. Um, and that's great, that's brilliant. So in 92 years, we've never had a president from a college um, and not a university. Um, and lots of people made a lot out of that when I was elected. Um, but what people didn't make a lot out of was that I'm the only the eighth woman president of NUS ever in 92 years. Nobody made a big deal out of that. Nobody said that that's not good enough. And nobody stood up and said that we need to change it. No one mentioned it. And actually, in my election, I didn't mention it either, because it's really hard to talk about it. And, and I didn't put it on my manifesto, and I didn't want to be the woman that talks about women, and I didn't want to just be that woman who always bangs on about women. But do you know what I am? And I'm not ashamed of it. Because the thing is, that I realised when I got elected that as the eighth woman president of NUS ever, I had a responsibility to all of the women that I represented. I had a responsibility to the 60% of NUS's membership who are women students, who turn up to their campuses every day and face sexism and misogyny, and not even just the kind of misogyny that we're here tonight to talk about, but the kind of misogyny that is subtle and runs through everything that we do every day. The kind of misogyny that means that I can't stand up on a stage anywhere but here and not be catcalled out or wolf or that. The kind of misogyny that means that I can't go on TV without people commenting on what I wear and not what I say. The kind of misogyny that means that people think that I win elections because I sleep with people to get votes and not because of my politics and my values and my beliefs. And that misogyny is disgusting and we have to do something about it. And look, I, I, talk, about, I talk about this a lot, right? And, and it's important to me because NUS is doing a lot of work at the moment about how we get more women to be leaders of organisations and that's really important, it's really, really, really important because only 1 in 10 of our student union presidents are women and only 15% of our vice chancellors are women and only 1 in 4 MPs in this country are women but do you know what, you can't run before you can walk and if you're terrified of walking home at night and you're terrified of going to university and you're terrified in your own home and in your campus and in your lecture theatre, then you are terrified of running for election and you're also terrified of leading an organisation. And we cannot start to tackle the position of women in leadership before we start to tackle the position of women in general on our campuses and in our everyday lives. Because when I was 16, I was a student in my college and... I was the captain of my women's football team and I told people that I didn't think that women should be allowed to play football and I told people that I didn't think that women should be leaders because that's what people told me and that's what I had to say to be accepted by the people around me and it's absolutely disgusting because it's the messages that we're sent every day that as a woman you have to buy into misogyny to be accepted in society. It's absolutely disgusting and, and actually the thing is that I grew up in a rural area in Cornwall. Um, and I walked down the street at night and there was no street lighting and there was no one around me and there was no safety net and I was terrified. And now I live in London and I walk down the street and there is street lighting and there are people around me and I'm still terrified walking home at night. And I still light a cigarette because that makes me feel safer and I still hold my keys between my fingers when I walk to my house at midnight because that makes me feel safer. And when we live in a society that forces women into that position, it is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm, I'm not going to stand on stages anymore and apologise for the fact that I put women in leadership as a priority in NUS. And I'm not going to stand on stages and apologise for the fact that I talk about women probably more than I talk about anything else. And I'm not going to stand on a stage and apologise for the fact that in all of my politics, feminism comes first before everything else. Because do you know what? I'm a woman. 
and I'm a leader and I'm a survivor and it's it's really really hard but if people like you and people like me and people in this union and people in this country don't come out every single day and tell people that this is how we feel and this is what we face and this is what we need to do to change something about it then nothing will change and and Oh, the last thing that I want to do before I, before I stop kind of talking about women, because um, that's all I seem to do at the minute, is say a massive thank you to, to Manchester Union, because this is incredible, it's really incredible, and, and people probably don't, I don't know, when, when you're the leader of an organisation, and I think particularly when you're an elected leader, and when you're a politician and whatever, people think that you're kind of bulletproof, and I'm not, and, and no one else is, and it's really hard, and it is the most incredible thing in the world to know that there are thousands of people who have your back as a woman, who have your back as a feminist, and have your back as somebody who wants misogyny and sexism to end. So thank you, thank you for coming. Um, and I want to say thank you to the stewards who came out tonight and um, looked after us, because do you know what? There, there might be thousands of us and, but what's really, really upsetting is that, is that even with thousands of us here, we're still not safe and we still need people to look after us. So thank you to all of the allies who turned up and all of the allies who support us and particularly to all of the stewards who gave up their time tonight to come out and make this possible. And then, and then finally, I, I want to say a massive thank you um, to one of the most, single most incredible and inspirational feminists I have ever met in the student movement, who is most of your, not all of your, because some of you have come from like millions of miles away, um, most of your women's officer, um, Tabs, who... <laughs> is the reason that you're all here tonight and the reason that you all had a walk in the dark and the reason that you're tackling misogyny on your campus and in your student union and in your lecture theatre and in your halls and your homes and in society and in the whole of the UK. She's incredible and, uh, and I can't thank you enough. I really, really can't. So yeah, you're, you're amazing and I, re I really, really appreciate this. So um, thanks. Thank you all. Have an amazing night. I am in awe of you, so yeah, thanks, take care.